Hello again. We are glad to join you for a few more minutes here, going through the book of Matthew chapter 24. And we're only doing a verse, maybe two at the most procession here. Um, and we're getting down to verse four in the 24th chapter of Matthew uh, tonight. Uh, just going to back up a little bit so we can kind of dovetail this into the last video. It says in verse 3, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Their questions were concerning the establishing of his kingdom on earth. Um, and uh, I think a lot of times that's uh, taught in a different, um, with a different mindset. And you'd have to look at the video prior to this to know what I'm saying. Um, but let's move on. Um, chapter 24, verse 4 says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. So we're looking at this verse, and Jesus is giving a warning about deception. And I'm thinking uh, deception right now is uh, one of the things that people are so focused on. What do you believe? What can you uh, trust as far as information sources. We hear this and we hear that and um, it, it's almost enough to make our head spin. The problem being we don't know how to fact check every single thing that we're hearing and, and so it leaves us in a quandary as to what to believe. That's where we are um, uh, smart, if I could say that, to go to the scriptures and to study those. They may not particularly speak of every instance that's going on in the world that we're living, but the things that they do say, the scriptures, that is, the things that are said there are true, and we can base our uh, faith, our confidence can be in these. And so Jesus is saying, in the last days, or as these things approach and begin to take place, the first thing is to not be deceived. Um, and then, so it's going to take a little bit of effort on our part. It's going to take some study, uh, some prayer. We're going to have to ask God to help us to see. Uh, but you can chase the news around all day long, and I'm sure many of us are doing that right now. Uh, and you're not really ever going to know for sure what is the truth. But uh, this book is true. It's verified itself over the centuries. And so we can look here and know uh, that we can have confidence. And so Jesus says, um, don't let anybody deceive you. How, how comforting it would be just to know the truth. And so here we're looking at some verses uh, that are going to be just that, the truth of God's word. Um, and we're going to move to a next, the next verse, verse 5. It says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And so the deception not only is in the world and the facts that are coming, or the, or the, or the lies that are coming, facts that are coming, we don't know which is which, but he's saying there are going to come many in his name saying that he is Christ. Okay. Now there's, there's a several ways you can take that verse. Um, uh, but this is the deception process at work. He, he said, I am Christ. They're going to say, I am Christ. Number one, the false prophet can say he is Christ. Or the false prophet can say, that Jesus is Christ, and yet work some deception into to that. Um, but uh, looking into the Greek a little bit, I don't get into that too much. Um, but the word I there is the same word as ego. It's uh, uh, our, 
ourself, okay, where it says, I am Christ. It, the, that word in the Greek is ego. I, I am Christ. Most of the time, that word is translated me in the Greek. Uh, the second most often translation of that word ego in this, um, the, here in this uh, statement of Jesus's, it's translated of me. And then the third most is the word I, as it is here. So uh, we might want to look at how that word is translated to get the best idea of what Jesus is saying when he says, many shall come and say that I am Christ. And, and so let's, let's look at that just a little bit. And this could get a little awkward uh, because the Greek language, uh, when you, um, when you put it together in a sentence kind of throws the, the words around a little different than we're used to. Um, but um, it says uh, they're going to come in my name saying, and that word saying is the word Lego, which means to lay forth. Yeah, like the Lego toys. Yep, yeah, that's the one. Um, the Legos is to lay forth. And you can see as you play with those Legos, you lay forth a pattern. And that's what he's saying. So they're going to lay forth that I am Christ or the word ego, which again could be translated. Um, remember the word I is the third most often translated word the second most is a, is a is actually a phrase of me and the f most translated is me and so in, in looking at it in english it wouldn't say me am christ we wouldn't say that so we know that that most often translated word me is probably not what it's talking about uh the king james renders it i am christ but let's look at the second most one it says of me, or um, we would have to change the wording around a little bit. I l l putting forth that Christ is of me. Now think about the uh, the the apostle, the false apostle, the false prophet, the false teacher saying that he's going to come to you saying Christ is of me. If somebody doesn't say that, we're not going to believe that. We're not going to accept that. And so deception comes when the preacher or the teacher says, Christ is of me. Um, and we just accept that without checking into what they're actually saying. And the Bible is very clear on how to identify a false prophet and a false teacher and uh, we can get into that uh, not right at this point but we need to check out if they say that Christ is of me I could come to you and say hey I can show you how to come to Christ how do you know that Christ is of me I'm, I'm going to lead you to to Jesus uh, we're going to have to go to the scriptures and look that up because the first thing that the Lord is doing, he's putting forth this idea that deception in these times that the disciples are inquiring about is going to be running rampant. There's going to be deception here, there, and everywhere. And I, I'm, I'm getting a little older. I won't admit to how old that is right now. But never in my life have I ever seen where there are so many opposing facts coming against one another. Well, all these things cannot be true because one is saying the opposite of the other. Somebody here is lying and I want to know who it is. And so <clears throat> how are we going to do that? Can we get into the political realm and, and dig all that up? Well, they're going to try that. But uh, myself, I, I'm just going to have to leave that up to some experts, use my best judgment. But the one thing that I can do for myself and you can do for yourself is to open the pages of this book and begin to study and to seek out how do we know who is and who is not telling the truth 
because Jesus says this is the first thing in the last days that you need to concern yourself with, and that is who is telling you the truth. And you can't leave that up to somebody else to decide for you. You can't go sit in a church and say, well, my preacher said this or my preacher said that. The Bible said there are going to be many people that are going to lay forth that they are of Christ. We've got to find out for ourselves. And so uh, study, prayer, seeking, and understanding the method that Jesus put forth in order to know what the truth is. You know that John wrote um, that hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. There is a way to know the difference. And maybe next, uh, maybe next uh, segment, I'm going to have to talk about that because we can't leave this subject until we have a basis on how to tell what the truth is. So appreciate your time. And I think about this to listen to somebody on, on YouTube or Facebook for 10 minutes is, is almost an impossibility to, to expect. I, uh, because there's so many, but there again is the opportunity for so much deception to go forth because propagating it, sending it out is so easy to do. Many are doing it. Be careful what you believe. Next time we're going to check out how to know uh, the difference between the truth and the spirit of error. The spirit of truth and spirit of error. It's in the same pot passage where John says, try the spirits. So we're going to do that next time. Thanks for listening. Appreciate it.